we are here and all are welcome here before the mystery within and the mystery beyond come let us gather in person and online just as we truly are in all of our diversity with our blessings and our imperfections with aching hearts and weary bodies rekindled by joyful moments our stories and memories even if sometimes they seem elusive may we take to heart that in our diversity with all of our gifts and challenges that it brings we are more human than otherwise these opening words welcome all who gather for our Sunday service here in this space of Kensington Unitarians. Welcome to those of you who have gathered here in person in Essex Church and also to all who are joining us through Zoom from far and wide. For anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Michael Allured and I'm the minister with Golders Green Unitarians in Northwest London. And I'm delighted to be back here this morning to lead your service today. This morning's service is titled, Let Justice Roll Down Like Waters. A saying that may be familiar to most of us from the much loved hymn, We'll Build a Land, which we'll be singing later on. And we'll be using this phrase as a starting point for our reflections on the topic of justice and equality. But now, let us light our chalice flame. We light our chalice flame as we do each week. This simple ritual connects us in solidarity with Unitarians and Unitarian Universalists the world over. And it reminds us of the historic religious tradition of which this gathering is part. The lighting of this chalice calls us to attention to make this a safe and sacred space for prayer, for sharing, in which we can reconnect with life's depths and our highest aspirations. A community of solidarity and trust to nurture and strengthen us for the days of our lives. May this candle that we have lit be a beacon that lights our way, guiding us through these still uncertain times and inspiring each of us to the paths of peace, of justice, of love. Let's sing together now. Our first hymn is number 21 in your purple hymn books. Come and find a quiet centre. And for those joining 
via Zoom, the words will be up on screen. Feel free to stand or sit as you prefer. Hymn number 21. So let's take those joys and concerns into a time of prayer. You might first want to adjust your position for comfort, close your eyes, or soften your gaze. Whatever works for you. Do whatever you need to get into the right state of body and mind for us to Pray together now. Spirit of life, God of all love, in whom we live and move and have our being, we turn our full attention to you, to light, the light within and without, as we tune in to the depths of this life and the greater wisdom of which and through which we are all intimately connected. Be with us now as we allow ourselves to drop into the silence and stillness at the very centre of our being. Spirit of life, you who animate the universe, help us to remember the gift that is a human life with our consciousness and senses, we can touch, taste, see and feel. So much that is good and alluring and enticing. 
spirit of life. Some of us here today may be thinking of concerns more than joys, of loss rather than enjoyment. For those of us, we ask for healing and restoration. To those of us, we pledge our aid, just as cares arise, so shall they pass, just as grief pains, new joy beckons. Spirit of life, may we remember that life is a dance, and may we ensure that we move to the rhythm of the dance. So in a few quiet moments, let us take time to pray inwardly the prayers of our own hearts, calling to mind all those souls we know to be suffering this day, whether close to home or on the other side of the world. Let us hold all these scared and sacred beings in the light of love. Let us also pray for ourselves. We too ask sacred beings who face our own struggles and muddle through life's ups and downs. Let us take a few moments to reflect on our own lives and ask for what we most need this day, comfort, forgiveness, or guidance to flourish. Spirit of life, God of all love, as this time of prayer comes to a close, we offer up our joys and concerns, our hopes and our fears, our beauty and our brokenness. And we call on you for insight, for healing, for renewal. As we look forward now to the coming week, help us to live well each day and to be our best selves, using our unique gifts in the service of love, of justice, of peace. Amen. Let's sing again. It's number 198 in our purple book, We'll Build a Land. And the words will be on the screen as usual for those who are 
joining us from home. This reading is by Adam Lawrence Dyer and is called Healing. Don't speak to me of healing racism or wounded souls or the painful hurt until you are willing to feel the scars on my great, great grandmother Laurie's back. Don't speak to me of values or justice or righting wrongs until you are able to feel the heartache of my great grandfather Graham, whose father may have been his master. 
Don't speak to me of equity or opportunity or the common good until you are able to hear the fear from my grandmother May as the only black woman in her college. Don't speak to me of passion or longing or standing on the side of love until you know the shame felt by my mother, Edwina, mocked by teachers for the curve of her back. Don't speak to me of together or understanding or empathy until you know my rage as a young actor, hearing the direction to be more black, more male. The pain you are trying to heal has no real name. The pain you speak of has no story. It is anonymous, vague and empty. Don't speak to me of healing, for I heal the second I am ripped apart. My wounds self-suture, and like the clever creature I am, I just grow new legs to outrun the pain ever faster. It is something I have to pra practice for generations that feel like an eternity. So please, don't speak to me of healing because you cannot know what healing means until you know the hurt. Thanks, Janine. We're moving into a time for meditation now. I'm going to share a selection of quotes in relation to our theme. This will take us into three minutes silence, which will end with our bell. Then we'll hear some music for meditation from Andrew, so let's do again what we need to do to be comfortable. Adjust our position, put our feet flat on the floor. Maybe close your eyes. As we always say, the words are an offering and you can use this time to meditate in your own way. I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I am changing the things I cannot accept. Angela Davis. I sit on a man's back, checking him, choking him, and making him carry me. And yet, assure myself and others that I am very sorry for him and wish to ease his lot by all possible means except by getting off his back. Leo Tolstoy If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen to side with the oppressor. Desmond Tutu. Poverty 
is the worst form of violence. Mahatma Gandhi. It is certain in any case that ignorance allied with power is the most ferocious enemy justice can have. James Baldwin.
Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. These words, familiar words from the book of Amos in the Old Testament were paraphrased by Martin Luther King in his I Have a Dream speech. He dreamt of the day when injustice and unfairness had been washed away, when understanding among the peoples of the earth had grown deeper. Today, some 60 years later, it's a work that remains very much a work in progress. Yes, we've taken strides forward, yet in some respects our willingness to embrace and live by the concepts of justice and equity has gone backwards. The philosopher A.C. Grayling made an observation about the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And he spoke of its being diminished since it was born from the ashes of the Second World War. A noble principle, this idea of uni universal human rights, this principle of unqualified equity for anyone, anywhere in the world before proper, properly constituted and administered law. He goes on to observe, however, that about the only thing now universal about human rights is the irritation they prompt in governments. They're inconvenient, they think, and they protect the undeserving. It's not difficult to see the basis for A.C. Grayling's line of argument. We do indeed live in a troubled world in troubled times and a globalized world that is more complicated to navigate than it once was. Getting justice and equity for all is a noble aspiration and turning the principle into reality sometimes feels impossible, not least because we human beings, you and I are labyrinths of contradictions over laying and influencing our own contradictions of heart and head are everyone else's contradictions in families in workplaces in communities in countries across continents our desires passions our power struggles, our fears of losing the power that we have, competing and all the while maneuvering for what we want. Do we recognize this going on at every level of human interaction? From this reality, where is the hope for change, the strength to change things that we might ask ourselves how we do that. We might also ask ourselves why even bother? I've got three suggestions in answer to that question. Three suggestions for giving us hope and courage and persistence. First, the idea of justice and equity being a religious one that is integral to our spiritual growth. Justice and equity. 
We wouldn't want to be treated unjustly or unfairly ourselves. So why should we think it's all right to show others injustice and unfairness? The foundation for human relations in all the major world religions is this golden, sometimes called platinum rule. God expects our manifestation of justice to reflect how we treat each other. Justice is mentioned nearly 160 times in the Bible. While most are retributive references, a lot of them are rooted in concepts of justice and fairness. Isaiah 10, chapter 10, verse 1 and 2, for instance. Woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees to deprive the poor of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed. This religious idea of fairness and justice speaks to us through the hymn that we have just sung based on the words of Isaiah and Amos. The prophet Amos lived in Israel at the time of King Jeroboam, 786 to 746 BCE. His reign was marked by great economic prosperity, but the rich were getting richer and the poor poorer. Social justice, it, social injustice ran rampant in the land. There was national apathy towards suffering and injustice. The economically weak could find no redress in the courts and no one to champion their cause until the coming of Amos. He pointed out the contradictions between the status the nation took to itself as God's chosen people and the reality. Secondly, the pursuit of injustice and equality is in our own interests. If we all have sufficient for our needs, it is less likely that there will be unrest. The feeling that we are treated unfairly as a community, as something less than sentient, a sentient being who has the same basic human feelings and needs as our perceived oppressors, that breeds resentment. The feeling of unfairness may begin as a seed. The seed may grow in the hearts of parents with children when there is a breadwinner on the living wage who waits 62 days for treatment to begin after a cancer diagnosis. The parents, the children, the community may ask, is it so unreasonable for us to feel that there is injustice in the world, that because we are not multi-millionaires, we cannot begin treatment within the same week of our diagnosis. From the resentful seed may come stronger feelings, hatred when the family lose their home because mum or dad are too ill with cancer and delayed treatment to continue working. Then comes the violence. And then comes the fear 
and retaliation. And then the, an escalation in violence, de deepening into hatred and an overwhelming desire to crush the perceived or the real threat to our survival. How recognisable is the pattern that I describe? It's one we can surely trace through the story of humanity and inhumanity across time and place. Where then is the hope that we cry out for? It's here. It's now. It's all around us in this space and online. It's in our minds and in our hearts. When we recognize what is unjust and unfair, when we recognize that we do a great thing in its recognition. That is the first step towards justice and equity. We may feel helpless in the face of global forces in play. Of course we do. How can we challenge injustice? Maybe that's how the poor in Israel felt until Amos gave them a voice. Amos was a shepherd from Tekoa in Judea who also said that he was a dresser of sycamore trees. Amos, of course, was no professional prophet or a member of a prophetic guild. His example reminds us that we've got more power than we may initially believe to nudge life towards justice. Justice and equity are gifts that we give to the cosmos and to ourselves. It's a gift that my uncle, who passed away last night at the age of 93, gave throughout his life. And I pay gratitude to him today. At the heart of our Unitarian foundations are a free and inquiring religion and the concept of service to humanity. Across the pond, our Unitarian Universalist sisters and brothers are guided by seven principles. The first is the inherent worth and dignity of all. The second asks us to aspire to justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. And the last, the last invites us to belong to that interdependent web of existence of which we are all part. It is this, the interdependent web, that shows us why justice and equity are the way, the way forward those in the Christian tradition may say the way to salvation. Together, emboldened by our collective strength and our hope, may we continue our journeys in the complicated quest towards how we reach that promised land. Amen. It's time for more singing, this time our last hymn, number 36 in our purple books, For Everyone Born a Place at the Table. And the words will be up on the screen. Please sing up and let's enjoy our closing hymn, 36.
Thanks to Michael for leading a lovely service today. Thanks to Ramona for tech hosting. Thanks to Sonia for co-hosting and welcoming everyone online. If you join on Zoom, please do hang on afterwards for a chat with Sonia. Thanks to Janine for reading. Thanks to Andrew for playing for us and for Benji for supporting our singing. Thanks to Pat and John, who's just left, to, to set up for doing the coffee today. For those of you who are in person, Please do stay for a cuppa after the service. 
like served in the hall next door. And why not join us for our Sunday conversation, exploring the service theme, which Janine will be hosting in the church from 12.30 to 1.30. There are various other small group activities you can join during the week. This coming Wednesday, we have community singing once again at 7 p.m. That's been a roaring success, and we had 30 people join us a few weeks ago. So come along and join the fun. And Sonia will be here as usual for her near dance classes at lunchtime on Friday. We also have our regular online heart and soul contemplative spiritual gathering on Friday at 7 p.m. This week's theme is visitations. We gather for sharing and prayer, and it's a great way to get to know others on a deeper level. Email our Minister Jane if you'd like to book your place for that and get the link. If you want to join in for our Better World Book Club, which takes place online, the next gathering will be on Sunday, the 24th of March at 7.30, when we'll be talking about Laziness Does Not Exist by Devon Price. And a date for your diaries. We're going to celebrate the 250th anniversary of the founding of this congregation on Sunday, the 14th of April. Jane and Sarah will be co-leading a special service and there'll be a congregational bring and share lunch afterwards. Save the date and look out for me for sign-up sheet so you can let us know what food you're planning to contribute. Next Sunday at 11 a.m., our Minister Jane will be back to lead our service on friendship. This is going to be a two-parter exploring this theme. The following week will be an interactive congregational service exploring the same theme. So do plan to come along on both Sundays if you can. Details of all our various activities are printed on the back of the order of service for you to take away, and they're also in the Friday email. Do please sign up for the mailing list if you haven't already. The congregation very much has a life beyond a life, sorry, a life beyond Sunday mornings. We encourage you to keep in touch, look out for each other, and do what you can to nurse your supportive connections. I think that's everything. So I'll hand back to Michael for our closing words. Thank you. Thank you all for, for being here and participating. So our closing words now to send us on our way for the week ahead. Be kind, be brave, be just, be merciful, be hopeful. This is how we keep the chalice flame burning until we are together again to light our flame anew. Blessed be.